In this video, you're gonna learn how to create and hand off a payment to a Stripe terminal reader. Now, this is part of a longer series on integrating with Stripe terminal using the server-driven integration path. If you haven't seen our previous videos on listing readers or connecting to a reader and setting it up in a dashboard, you're highly encouraged to check those out. Otherwise, you're welcome to follow along using the repo that you see below. Let's get started. We'll start off by adding a function to our process button so that it automatically hands off a payment for a given amount to the selected reader. On the back end, the first step is creating a route for processing a payment. Inside the route, we are going to create a payment intent. For a terminal payment intent to work, it needs an amount, a currency, the payment methods type array needs to include card present, and the capture method must be set to manual. Once we've gotten the payment intent, we can pass it off to the reader by calling process payment intent with the reader ID. This tells Stripe to tell the reader to, to collect a payment. For our integration, we're gonna pass back both the reader and the payment intent. On the front end, we'll head to our empty process payment function, which runs whenever a user clicks on the process button. We'll do a fetch on our reader slash process payment endpoint that we just created, passing the reader ID and the amount. If there's an error, we'll show it. Otherwise, we'll grab the payment intent in reader objects from the response and set them to our reader and payment intent react variables. In view, react variables are wrapped in an object, so we need to update their values by assigning to the variable dot value. We'll also add a message to our page just below the form to let us know that we're actively processing a payment for the specific reader. Back in the Stripe dashboard, we see in the logs that the reader object has an action where the status is in progress for the process payment intent action type. If you're using a physical reader, clicking on the process button will actually transition the reader to the collection screen, and you can test it by tapping it with the test card. When you tap the card, the reader will pretend to send the encrypted card data to Stripe in the card networks and transition the payment to an uncaptured state. For simulated readers, there's no such option. Calling process payment does prompt the simulated reader, but because it's simulated, you can't see it and you can't tap your test card against it. To help us test a simulated reader, we'll add functionality to our simulate payment button. On the back end, we'll create a route for simulating a payment for a simulated reader. It'll take in the reader ID from the request body and call present payment method using the test helper. Calling this method simulates a customer tapping their card against the simulated reader. This also transitions the payment intent that the reader is currently processing to the uncaptured state. On the front end, we can update our simulate payment click handler to call our new simulate payment endpoint. We just need to pass in the reader ID of the simulated reader. Let's give our simulate payment button a try. First, we click on the button, which creates a payment intent and then hands it off to the reader. If we navigate to the Stripe dashboard, we can see that the payment intent that was just created is incomplete and lacks a payment method. Next, we'll head back to our app and click the simulate payment button. This simulates tapping a card ending in 4242 on the reader. The payment succeeds. Now, if we refresh the page, that was showing the incomplete payment intent, the payment is uncaptured. We're almost finished with our integration. Our last step is gonna be capturing the payment, which is critical. Uncaptured payments are released back to the customer after 24 hours, so always capture your payments. On the back end, we'll add a route for capturing a payment. This will take in a payment intent ID from the request body, which will pass to Stripe's payment intents capture API. We'll then return the now captured payment intent in our response. On the front end, we'll fill out our capture payment function for our capture button, passing in the payment intent ID in our request, adding a message for any errors after the request has resolved. Otherwise, we'll log a message that we've captured the payment intent and reset the app back to its base state. Now we have all the pieces required to test an in-person payment with Stripe Terminal. We can select a reader, hand off a payment with the process button, and simulate tapping a card. 
After tapping the card by clicking the simulate button, we can see in the Stripe dashboard that the payment has transitioned to the uncaptured state. We can capture the funds and finalize the payment by clicking the capture button. Doing so transitions the payment to the succeeded state. In this episode, we learned the four API actions for accepting a one-time payment with Stripe Terminal. We created a payment intent and handed it off to the reader using the payment intent and terminal reader APIs. We saw how to simulate tapping a card on a simulated reader with the terminal reader test helper. And finally, we learned how to capture a payment intent. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.